So last time, uh, we started off with the case study and we described the problem of the case study, okay? And we said that the, the, it was a decision case and the decision we have to make is this decision. Do we think the German government bond, long term, long term government bond, right? <coughs> Ten year government bond, interest rate is going to increase or decrease over the next year? Okay, and why? And do we think that the spread between Greece and Germany? So basically, the Greece, the same question for Greece, right? Uh, is Greece going to get further away from Germany or closer to Germany? So this is the decision we need to make in the case. So we were going through the start of the case, we also want to answer a couple of questions. So we're going to discuss this question. We, we wrote down in the last class okay, about this information. So uh, we had the convergence of the Eurozone long rates that occurred from the late 90s up until the beginning of the, what is GFC? What do you think? Global financial crisis, right? So the Eurozone, we discussed this one in the last class, right? So discuss with your partner. We saw the graph, and we saw that Italy, Italy's rates got very close to the German rate. Do you remember the graph? Until the financial crisis, and then Italy's rate went up again, okay? 2008 was the financial crisis. Okay? So the late not the euro started in the year 2000. The euro started around this time. Okay? So the question is what factor was behind the convergence? Convergence means moving together. So I'll discuss with your partner. When we're discussing about these factors, we can think about these things. These kind of factors we talked about in the last class that can affect the supply and demand of the bonds, right? The GDP, growth, expected future output. Do we expect the GDP to grow or not? Okay. Well, uh, do we have a lot of savings in the world economy? The government budget deficit. Is the government spending a lot more money? Does the government have a lot of debt? Do you understand? Government debt and deficit. Monetary policy. What is the monetary policy like? Are we doing QE? Are we rising the interest rate or inflation? Safe haven, risk on, risk off. So they talk about the investment environment as risk on. Investors like risk. Or risk off, investors don't like risk. A little bit similar to this one, expected returns in other assets. So if I expect to get a good return in, uh, in stocks, am I going to invest in bonds? If the stock market is growing, am I going to invest in bonds or invest in stocks? What do you think? In stocks, right? So if I expect a high return in stocks, is that a risk on or risk off environment in the world? Risk on. We talk about investors are risk on. Risk on investors take their money out of gold, take their money out of bonds, take their money out of anything and invest in stocks. Okay? Because the economy is going well. That's a risk on. Risk off is it's crisis time. Investors don't like risk. Okay? Where do you go if you don't like risk? What is low risk? Assets. US bonds, German bonds, gold, right? Those kind of things. So what is high risk? Emerging market bonds. Right? Bonds in, in companies which are risky, in, in emerging markets are risky, okay? Uh, stocks, stocks are risky, okay? So we have these kind of factors. So discuss with your partner about this. Why did this happen? Okay, why did the interest rate converge until the financial crisis? <coughs> So why did this happen? Why Italy was different from Germany, right? Much higher, but it became the same as Germany. The bond price. So why? Why did it converge? 
Why did this happen, right? We looked at this graph the last time. Why did Italy was at 12% in the 90s? We made the euro, it was the same as Germany until 2007. Okay? Why did it happen? Okay? So look at the factors. Choose some factor that you think is important. Okay, so why did they get together? We can see there's two two factors from here. Which two factors are you going to choose? Monetary policy. Monetary policy, right? Why? What happened to Italy's monetary policy and Germany's monetary policy? The same, right? So here we had the Italian central bank, okay? And here we had the German central bank finished. Italian Central Bank, German Central Bank, well, they're still there. They still do regulation. Do you understand regulation? Yes. But they don't do monetary policy. Okay, monetary policy is now done by the ECB. So, taken out of Italy's hands, okay? Taken out of Germany's hands and given to the ECB, okay? So, we have the same monetary policy. So, we should have the same inflation. We have the same inflation. Okay, you understand? And then the second one, what one are you going to choose second? Safe haven. Huh? Safe haven. They're together, not apart. Safe haven effect would be explaining why they get apart. Well, we're asking why did they come together? One is the same monetary policy, what's another one? We mentioned in the last class when we talked about... Risk hmm? Risk the government budget deficit, yes, why? Okay, so we also, on top of the monetary policy, we made the fiscal policy rule, right? Fiscal policy, which says maximum 3% government deficit. Okay, do you understand government deficit? Yes. Okay, so because we... We, Italy now does not control its monetary policy. Monetary policy is controlled by the ECB, okay? The euro has all the same inflation. And the fiscal policy, Italy's government shouldn't spend too much money, right? Is also controlled. So the government budget deficit shouldn't get too bad, okay? So investors decide Ita Italian and German bonds is all the same thing, right? In the euros. So that's where we finished the last time. So the next question we're going to talk about is what factors were behind the divergence of Eurozone long rates that began during the global financial crisis and still persist today? So t today we don't have this situation, okay? Uh, investors made a mistake, okay? Today we have their different, different interest rates on the two continents. So we're going to discuss about this and then you're going to answer this question. So, uh, we're going to look at uh, the divergence in the case. So, first of all, we can look at the graph. Then I'll write down some of the important points on the board. So, 
We saw this one already. Okay, this is 2008. Germany and Greece is the same. Same line. Seven, six percent Greece bonds, six percent German bonds. Germany goes down to five percent. Greece goes up to thirty-seven percent. Okay. Uh, we can also look. We'll see later. Uh, Ireland, Portugal, and Greece. Right. The same again. Ireland and Portugal very similar. Okay. Ireland, Portugal also moving up. The government, the interest rate on the government bonds. Okay. So. And turn on the light again. Somebody turned off the light. Okay, so where did uh, where did the periphery countries invest the money? So we said that the periphery country we call them PC for short, right? I don't have to write periphery country every time. Who am I talking about? Who are the periphery countries? Greece, Ireland, Ireland, Portugal, Spain. If you look at the geography of Italy, there, Europe, they're on the outside, right? They're on the periphery. So where did they? They got the the very low, historically low interest rates. So. Were they calm or did they get excited? They got excited. Would you get excited if you get very low interest rates? You never have before. You're used to borrowing at 5 and 6%. Suddenly the interest rate goes to 1%. Would you be excited? Yes, they got excited. What did they do? They got the loans, right? Then what did they spend the money on? That's the main point. Did they do useful activities and and uh, make a more productive economy with the money? No. So we hoped that they would strengthen their productivity, right? But instead, they made bubbles, especially real estate. We saw a very similar situation in most of the crisis related to real estate, right? So we got real estate bubbles. Okay. So I get the money, I start I buy another house. Okay? And I think I'll buy a second house and I'll rent it to people. Does that seem like a good idea? I can get the rental income. So a lot of people did that, right? They bought a second house and they want to get the rental income. But the problem is it's not it's more a speculative investment, right? The house price can go down. Okay? Than productive investment. If we were building all the new houses, then it would be a productive investment. But are the people building all the new houses? No, they're buying houses from other people that already exist. There's some new houses being built, but not a lot, right? So just the house price is going up, creating a bubble. Okay. So, uh, what happens to bubbles when we have some cri credit crisis? What can happen to the bubble we saw in Thailand? We have a real estate bubble, then why does the real estate bubble end? Why don't the house price just keep going up? So people are buying all the houses from each other, house prices are going up, why doesn't it go up forever? Some people think the house price is going to go up forever, right? When they're buying, somebody tells them, oh, it looks like a bubble. They say, no, it's not a bubble. House prices are going to stay going up. And then somebody says, but the last time in history, no, this is different. This time is different. House price won't go down, right? So what, what happens to cause the bubble to burst, usually? The interest rate is increased, right? In Europe, they increase the interest rate. Why do they increase the interest rate? Do they increase the interest rate? They're just sitting at home and they say, I think I'll just increase the interest rate, just for fun. Why do they increase the interest rate? Inflation, right? Bubbles, a lot of loans, people spending a lot of money. Gives us inflation. Gives us, we have to control the inflation, we increase the interest rate. Okay? Now are people taking out a lot of loans or not? 
not, right? In the US and Europe, we saw in one year interest rate from 1% to 4% in 2007. They know now they made a mistake. They increased the interest rate too quickly, right? So we had a quick interest rate increase, right, in Europe and the US. So are people buying houses now or not? The interest rate is expensive. Now we're not buying houses. People start to sell their houses, and then we get the whole psychological issue of herding. You understand herding? We talked about it before. Now everybody's selling their houses, trying to get out, right, or selling their stocks. So we have a kind of a crash of problem, right? You understand crash, bubble, crash in the real estate market. <coughs> does the crash in the real estate market cause problems for anybody else? Who else does that cause problems for? If the real estate market crashes, who does that cause problems for? Another industry gets a big problem. We saw in Thailand. Financial industry, right? So the real estate industry crash, the, the value of houses is going down. So in Spain and Ireland, the value of houses is minus 50%. And not just houses, commercial properties, minus 80%. Right? This story was mainly Ireland and Spain. Okay, even more exaggerated. In Ireland, some property price went down 70%. Okay, so the bank, the bank has a balance sheet problem. Do you understand balance sheet? Because the, on the bank's balance sheet, it says that the houses are worth a lot of money. But actually, the houses are not worth that much money. Okay, so now the bondholders in the bank start to get worried. And the bondholders don't roll over their bond. They start to take out their money from the banks, okay? The banks can't lend the money, banks can't get the credit from anywhere. Then we have zombie banks, right? Do you understand? Yes. So banks can't get credit. What, do we, what happens then when we have zombie banks? Is that good for the economy and small businesses? No, oh, so what does the government do to help the small business? What does the government do to help the small business? Support the banks, right? Bailout, do you understand bailout? In the US, in the UK, in Ireland, in Spain, but in Germany, all the governments bailed out the banks. What does that cause? Higher government deficit or lower government deficit? Higher. Higher government deficit, right? So we, we have a high government deficit. What's going to happen to the bond price? Price up. Okay, can you see the story? Okay. So Ireland and Spain, this is mainly the story. It's related to real estate. Okay, real estate bubble crash. Financial industry in trouble. Government bails out the financial industry. The UK and the US the same, right? And... Uh, then the government deficit is increased because the government bailed out the financial industry. Okay? Of course, this is very controversial. Does everybody agree that the government should save the banks? No, they don't. Some economists say, no, let the banks fail. In Iceland, they let the banks fail. Do you know Iceland? Yes. Yes, right? Iceland let the banks fail. The government didn't bail out the banks. So Iceland doesn't have as big government deficit problem. Okay, as the other countries, but it has an economic problem, some economic problem maybe, more than the other country, right? Lose the credibility, lose the confidence. So, uh, is that similar story to Thai Thailand crisis in some way? Similar to the Thai crisis? No. No, why not? Mm -hmm. Thailand problem caused managing system managing system what managing system money mm -hmm. Thailand using pigs fixed exchange rates yes but okay. Thailand and Spain is not mm. but Thailand was getting they had their they were able to because of their fixed exchange rate yes. they were able to get low loan in dollars low interest rate loan in dollars right yes. so of course you're right, there was the added complication that they left, in the end, 
uh, these countries didn't leave the euro, but basically Thailand in the US dollar is like Greece being in the euro, just not using the same money, right? So if Thailand left to recover, but these countries didn't leave to recover. That's the main difference, right? You understand? Yes. But similar situation. They got the cheap US dollar, invested in real estate, there was a crash when the interest rate went up, the inflation interest rate went up, okay? Then the banking industries had a lot of problems, then the economy is in big trouble, okay? So, uh, in the US, they decided first not to bail out the bank. Do you know Lehman Brothers? In the US they said, no, it's not fair. The US are quite capitalist society. So Lehman Brothers should fail. But then Lehman Brothers failed, and then AIG was going to fail too. But then if AIG failed, it would have been a big global problem because AIG is the main insurer for the airlines and the ships. So the next day, no airplanes would have taken off because they had no insurance if AIG failed. Can you imagine the panic around the world? Yes. Right, if the airlines couldn't run. So we can, we have, that's why the US decided to bail out the AIG, okay? the largest insurance company in the world. Okay, so this was controversial. We had some demonstrations in the US, Occupy Wall Street, and so on. So uh, we can see that kind of story. So uh, then we found with Greece, we found out that Greece had been lying about their accounts. Okay, so. Uh, we can, this is up more the story in Ireland and Spain, if we write to Greece here. So Greece, along with Goldman Sachs, got into trouble. Okay? They said, they said they, their deficit was 3.7%, okay? but actually their deficit was 12.5%. Actual deficit. Okay? So Greece reported deficit. So unfortunately, some countries don't make the reporting properly. Okay, for example, Argentina under-reporting inflation, right? Greece under-reporting budget deficit. Okay, so uh, this is 2009. So uh, we can see there's a big difference. So basically, Greece's problem was uh, they're just spending too much money, not really a housing. It's more the government, government spending. In this case, it's government spending on banks, but in Greece, just general government spending on defense, right? Defense, increasing the salaries of their workers. And then the problem was they were misreporting. Do you understand misreporting? Do you think the financial markets are happy when they're lied to by some governments? What are they going to do? More risk. What are they going to do? If the government gives them some false reporting for the last few years, what are the financial markets and investors going to do to the government? Buy their bonds or punish them? Punish them, right? So investors want to punish Greece. Because they... They misreported. And now, on top of that, they have a really big government deficit. That's not good, right? Government is spending a lot of money, too much. So the, everybody was shocked. Even the other EU countries were shocked that Greece would misreport. Are you surprised to find out that the government would give the false information like that? Are you surprised and shocked? No. No, you're not? You expect the governments to give false information? That much, that much different? That big difference? So we saw that time, at that time the Greece, uh, Greek uh, interest rates started to uh, go away a lot. So uh, then we had a bailout facility because uh, we have all these problems of in Greece and in Ireland, right? So we move on to what's going to be done about the high government deficit. Okay, so we have now bailout by who? European Union. Okay, 
the other European countries is going to help out. Who else is going to help out? Another international organization. IMF. And then we had also ECB helping to make the policy. This was called tri Troika. Okay. So, uh, <coughs> so this time the ECB said it would do some QE, right? So for example, the ECB buys government bonds. That is called QE, right? So the government bond price is very high. The ECB can step in and buy the government bonds Put and, and uh, bring down the price, okay? But not too much. Uh, Germany, in the treaty of the ECB, the ECB is not supposed to do that, but they changed the rule, okay? Germany, when we made the role, role, rules of the ECB, it's not supposed to buy government bonds. Why? Because it wants the governments to keep the fiscal rules. If the ECB starts buying the government bonds, it's like helping the governments to break the rule, spend a lot of money. Okay, so that's why they uh, they did that. So <coughs> anyway, they're going to bring in. So the EU, the IMF, give loans. Um, what conditions do you think they have? There are some conditions. What conditions do you think there are? Decrease the government deficit. Yes, so the, in, in Greece they, and in Ireland they want to reduce public sector wages and pension, right? Reduce wages. In Ireland it was reduced by 20%, right? Reduce the pensions. Reduce spending, government spending, right? This is called austerity. So we can see this is more on the supply side, economic theory, right? So we can't leave, like Thailand, we left the, the US dollar and we devalued our currency. But in Ireland and Greece, we can't leave the euro. So the idea is to reduce the wages to make us more competitive. Do you understand? Lowering the wages to make more competitive. Do people like that? So the idea is to, in the long run, we want to increase the productivity and competitiveness. So we're more productive if we can spend less money and produce more. So this is the idea. So. Uh, what's the idea of the, another idea of the ECB is to buy the bank bonds. Okay, what do they hope the bank will do with the money? This is QE again. What do they hope the banks will do with the money? Take credit. Give the credit to small companies, right? This was a problem in the US, they did the same thing. In their QE, they're buying the bad loans from the banks, right? And buying the bank's bonds. They want the bank to give credit to, cost to small business. But the problem is, sometimes the banks just spend the money on their bonus instead. Okay, and people get quite angry. So, uh, these days, the EUCB is still doing this program, buying government bonds in Italy, Spain, in the periphery, okay? And it is buying the bad loans or buying the bank bonds, buying assets in Europe uh, to try and stimulate the economy, okay? Are the Germans happy with this Pro program or not happy? What do you think? What do you think? Happy or not happy, the Germans? With the ECB buying the government bonds in the periphery and buying the bank's bonds? They're not happy. They didn't sign up for that. That wasn't in the founding 
charter of the ECB. Do you understand? They didn't sign up for that. But now there is an Italian president, and on the executive council we have one Italian, Spanish, French, and German. So the Italian and the Spanish and the French, France left Germany a little bit and moved towards Italy and Spain. So what can Germany do now? Try to beg France to come back, right? But you can understand a little bit of politics as well, right? Involved here. So uh, France is a key country in the middle, right? Are they going to support Italy and Spain or are they going to support Germany? Okay. So uh, <coughs> We have a high debt in the, in the periphery countries. So in 2010, we look at the government debt in the, in the different countries. So government debt to GDP is an important figure, right? It was 140% Greece, 97% Ireland, 83% uh, Portugal and 64% Spain. Okay, so the IMF visited these three countries: Ireland, Portugal, and Greece, okay. to give them some loans because they couldn't uh, get this in the markets. Okay. <coughs> so in order. In order to make this better, what do we need to do? We need to get, instead of a budget deficit, we need a budget surplus to improve this situation. Okay? In order to get the budget surplus, we need a GDP growth. Okay? In order to get GDP growth, what do we need? We need to be more productive and more competitive. Okay? Okay? So, this is the kind of uh, issue. Let's discuss the uh, second question. So, we the second question we asked is why did the during the crisis why did the uh, interest rates move diverge? You understand diverge? So discuss with your partner. The interest rates were together until two thousand and seven, two thousand and eight, right? The periphery countries and Germany was the same, but around 2008 they, they got really different. So discuss with your partner, why did they diverge?
policy was different in every country or the same? So monetary policy, is that the same or different in the different European countries? The same. So what policy is different? You mean fiscal? Fiscal policy? Government spending? Yeah, so the government spending is different in the different countries, right? Who broke the rules first? Can you remember? Who broke the government spending? There was some rule that you can only spend up to 3% a year, but who broke the rule first? Germany. Germany and France broke the rules first, and then they changed the rule. So then it was okay to break the rule, right? So who was spending a lot of money? What government was spending a lot of money and why? Which governments were spending a lot of money? The core countries or the periphery countries? Core countries. Which countries had a spending problem, a government spending problem? Core or periphery? Periphery. Can you say periphery? Is that the problem? It's hard to pronounce. Try. Can you say periphery? Try and see. Periphery. Periphery. Okay. Is there another word we can say that's easier than periphery? We can say the. We can call them the Gips. Gips countries. Greece, Ireland, Portugal, Spain. Gips. Is that easier? Gips, right? So the Gips country was spending. So why was Greece spending money? What was Greece spending money on? What kind of things was the Greek government spending money on? Were they spending money on productive? Investing money in science, research, and making a new productive company? What were they spending the money on? They increased their workers' wages a lot, the government workers, right? They also spent a lot on defense. Ironically, they, <coughs> Greece is very next, we can see now Greece is right on the border of the EU with Turkey, right? So Greece spends the most money on defense. So ironically, they spent they, they they bought a lot of German German goods, right? And other government spending. Okay. What about Ireland and Spain? Where did they spend the money on? So Portugal is similar to Greece, right? Mainly government just poor spending by the governments. Okay. And what about Ireland and Spain? Why did the government have to spend money in Ireland and Spain? They paid just in Greece and Portugal, more long-term problem, right? But Ireland and Spain, more once-off problem. What was the once-off problem in Ireland and Spain? What problem did they have there? Don't, does anybody know? No? What 
what was a kind of once-off problem in Ireland and Spain. One time they need to pay a lot of money. So what did the real estate cause? The real estate crisis cause? It's banks, right? They had to save their banks. Do you understand save the banks? Saving the banks costs a lot of money. So that really increased their government spending. Okay? So we can see that countries spend too much money on saving their banks or on something else. Okay? So uh, investors decided, and especially Greece, they lied to the investors, right? Investors don't like that, so they want to punish them. They're not going to buy their bonds again easily. Okay? So investors decide not to buy the bonds because of the debt, right? Very high debt in those countries. They're worried about, what are they worried about? Default. Do you understand default? Yes. So Greece made a voluntary arrangement with its creditors. Okay, it was high, higher, but Greece made some, not official default, but voluntary arrangement with its creditors where they got a haircut. Do you like getting a haircut? Do you like getting your haircut? No, I don't like getting my haircut, it's boring. <laughs> Investors really don't like getting a haircut. Haircut means they lose the value of their bond. So in Greece, the investors in Greek bonds had a haircut of 50%. So the IMF said, the IMF said, Greece can't pay back all the money, so you're not going to get back all your money, you're just going to get back 50%. Do you agree? And they said yes. So then it was voluntary, so not a default. Do you understand? Not official default, because they said, they made a deal, right? They thought, if Greece makes a proper default, official default, they could get back less money. Right? So they made a deal. I'll take 50% haircut on my bond. Okay? So let's take a break there then for 10 minutes. We'll discuss the main issue after the break. Oh, yeah. <laughs>